This presentation is on jellyfish distribution in time and space predicting leatherback hotspots. The study focuses on the Northwest Atlantic leatherback sea turtles, which are classified as endangered. Sea turtles are highly migratory species that move between breeding and foraging habitats. The Northwest Atlantic waters host one of the largest seasonal foraging aggregations of leatherback sea turtles. And while in these foraging areas, they can obtain 20 to 59% of their annual energy, feeding mainly on jellyfish. The aims of this study was to see if spatial hotspots of jellyfish and leatherback sea turtles occur at the same time and in space if jellyfish ranges expand or shift over time, and if any changes in sea surface temperature affect jellyfish abundance and distribution. This was all achieved through multiple satellite imaging techniques. The sea surface temperature data in this study was provided by the DFO, the Canadian Department of Fisheries and Oceans. Advanced Very High Resolution Radiometer is a type of passive sensor attached to a polar orbiting satellite which measures the reflectance of Earth in five spectral bands and across six channels. These include three solar channels in the visible near-infrared region and three thermal infrared channels. Its primary use is to monitor cloud cover and thermal emissions from the Earth. The standard resolution of these sensors is one kilometre per pixel at Nadir. This study also used data from 62 turtles that are tracked using Argos satellite link tags. Argos passive sensors use the Doppler effect to locate transmitters attached to the subjects below and can be equipped with additional GPS for enhanced accuracy when providing a location. The investigation into leatherback sea turtle aggregations and jellyfish presence showed that there was a significant hot spot in the Gulf of St. Lawrence shown in figure five, where you can see the red area of the map in map A, B and C showing the jellyfish and the leatherback presence. The Bay of Fundy was considered to be a cold spot and the Scotian Shelf is not statistically significant to be a hot spot or a cold spot. The hot spots and cold spots for jellyfish presence and weight was also investigated, shown in figure six with maps A, B and C being jellyfish presence and D, E and F being the weight. It was examined over 12 years and where there was hot spots of jellyfish presence, there was also hot spots of jellyfish weight. The sea surface temperature was analysed to detect whether rising sea temperatures would affect the distribution of jellyfish. All areas showed a general warming trend, however there was no significant correlation between jellyfish distribution and rising ocean temperatures. In the Gulf of St Lawrence, a moderate association between rising sea temperatures and an increase in jellyfish latitude was observed. Some of the limitations of this study is that the older the sensors are, the less accurate they can be. As well, AVHRR instruments lack the ability to perform accurate onboard calibrations once they are in orbit, meaning that all signals have to be sent to a processing centre to be able to determine the location of species. Signals cannot be transmitted or received when the signal path is being blocked, so when the tracker is underwater, the locations of the sea turtle may not be 100% accurate, meaning that behaviour such as foraging may be harder to interpret due to the inability to track when they are actually feeding. The study shows that turtles aggregate in areas of high prey. It displays the importance of overlapping areas of high jellyfish and leather pack density in important foraging areas. The Gulf of St Lawrence appears to be the main feeding ground. The Scotian Shelf appears to be used on route to feeding grounds and the Bay of Fundy was identified as not an important habitat due to low prey availability. Implications of rising sea surface temperature on jellyfish distribution, growth and sexual maturity include the possible disruption to the turtle's ability to feed at traditional feeding grounds and changes to timing and duration of foraging opportunities.